This is Robert Klein, and this is Fight Japan. In today's show, we're going to go inside the heart and mind of a former K1 champion. Nicholas Pettis is a K1 fighter, a former K1 champion, a karate champion, and a general man about town. He's originally from Denmark and came to Japan in his teens to go through three years of karate boot camp under the legendary karate master, Masoyama. In today's show, we're going to spend a few days with Nicholas to gain some insight into the life and mind of a top competitive fighter. See, you have guys that guys that play up on, you know, they want to look like the tough guys, they got tattoos and, you know, they got all the stuff for this and that, you know, they got all the talk and everything, but it doesn't really matter once you start fighting. He thinks I'm resting or he thinks he's resting, he still knows that the first mistake will be like my cue to go, you know, and I'll go for it, you know, I will not, you know, I will not, not take the chance to go for it, but when you're able to make that kind of decision within a split second, then most of the time, you come out on the top. Yeah. Sam! Chief! Go! Go! The best punches? Yeah. Probably a left body shot. Really? Yeah. Right to the liver. Do you score knockouts with that? Yeah. Sweet knockout. Oh. <laughs> when it hits clean, there's nothing you can do. That's, that's not, not many K1 punchers try that. Um, I learned from uh, Ernesto, who the four-time K1 champion. Uh -huh. When I went to his camp and sparred with him, he hit me with a left punch off and I thought, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's a punch to learn. Yeah, I gotta learn this. <laughs> He throws the punch on Will, but Will sees it and is able to cover. He throws it on Koichi, but Koichi is able to absorb it without too much damage. He uses this combination on an MMA fighter without much kickboxing experience and drops him. The fighter is not only inexperienced, he has a very narrow waist, which seems to be a particular vulnerability for this type of punch. So one, two, then going for the liver. Going high, going low. It's like a big pair of scissors. Chop, chop, chop. Today, Nicholas is in a different mode. He is pre-fight. He not only has to get himself ready, but also the other younger fighters. Here he coaches a young fighter who has literally developed diarrhea from the stress. Nicholas has to get him calmed down and ready to fight in only two days. Yeah. He'll get it again on Sunday. <laughs> so psychologically, you're used to all this by now. You don't have big pre-fight jitters or anything. Uh, no, not leading up to the fight. I mean, of course, the couple of the last couple of days before the fight, you get you know you get uh, apprehensive a little bit, you know. You know, it's, everything is becomes important to you, you know, small details and stuff, you know. But once you're on the day, you wrap your hands and you've got your gloves on. It's just another another day at the office. <laughs> I'm not going to leave it up to the judges or up to his hands to decide who's going to win this fight. So I'm putting in the effort now. When I get to the ring, I know I've done the work. Look him in the eyes. He'll know. Once we start fighting, he'll really know. Uh, you, you seem to have gone into another psychological mode here. This yeah. is Nicholas pre fight. Yeah. <laughs> Just got to focus on what I got to do. You know. Right in the, in the end. Your body has to be. Has to become fine-tuned. You have to get ready to do the job. 
try and do as little unnecessary movements as possible, stick to the plan. You gotta be like a like the string on a guitar, you know. If it's too relaxed, you can't play music. If it's too tight, it'll snap. You gotta be able to fine tune it, you know, so you can play music. That's what I intend to do. Play. <laughs> yeah.